Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today, the men and women of McConnell Air Force Base gathered to celebrate the opening of our new air traffic control tower. I am Staff Sergeant Austin Medina from the 22nd Operations Support Squadron, and I will be today's Master of Ceremony. The presiding official for today's ceremony is the Commander, 22nd Air Reviewing Wing, Colonel Joshua M. Olson. We also have many special guests, friends, and community members with us today, and we are honored to welcome representing Congressman Ron Estes, Mrs. Debbie Luther. <laughs> representing United States Senator Jerry Moran, Mr. Mike Heldstadt. <laughs> the Mayor of Wichita, the Honorable Mr. Jeff Longwell. The Mayor of Derby, the Honorable Mr. Randy White. The Commander, 18th Air Force, Major General Sam Barrett and his wife Kelly. The Vice Commander, 22nd Air Refueling Wing, Colonel Mark Barron and his wife Joy. The Command Chief, 22nd Air Refueling Wing, Chief Master Sergeant Sean Smith. The Commander, 184th Intelligence Wing, Colonel Mike Venerdi. The Commander, 931st Air Refueling Wing, Colonel Phil Heseltine. The Command Chief, 931st Air Refueling Wing, Chief Master Sergeant Takesha Williams. The Headquarters Air Mobility Command, Airfield Operations Division Chief, Colonel Malcolm T. Johnson. Golden Eagles, Mr. Jack Pulley, Ms. Pat Gallagher, and Mr. Frank Swellentrop. the owner-operator of Air Capital Flight Line, and our host for today's event, Mr. Charlie Stevens. <laughs> Finally, a special welcome to all past and present commanders, chiefs, first sergeants, <laughs> honorary commanders, friends of McConnell, Doc's friends, members of Team McConnell, and other co-workers and friends for being here to share this special occasion. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the presentation of the colors by the McConnell Air Force Base Honor Guard and the singing of our national anthem by Staff Sergeant Ariel Coleman.
Thank you, Staff Sergeant Coleman. Chaplain Wildey, please come forward to offer our invocation. Will you pray with me? Father God, creator of the heavens and the earth, we are thankful for this day, and there is plenty to rejoice over. This is a special day for members of Team McConnell and the 22nd Operations Group. This day represents the culmination of years of work to establish a new air traffic control facility. Father, we are thankful to all those who had a hand in making the new control tower a reality from the government leaders to the community partners and the contractors. May this tower and those who work in it be a beacon to those who take to the skies. Father, we ask that you pour your blessings upon this day and in this celebration. It is in your name that we pray. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Wilde. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. Lieutenant Colonel Colonel Daniel P. McVeigh, Commander, 22nd Operations Support Squadron, will now make a few comments. Thanks, Austin. Welcome, Team McConnell, and uh, good afternoon and welcome to today's ceremony. Uh, Mrs. Olson, thanks for being here. Sorry I forgot to mention you at the opening, but uh, uh, welcome to today's ceremony for the Air Force's newest control tower. And uh, as luck would have it in Kansas weather, you know, we had to push to our alternate location, so thanks for being flexible. Uh, but if we wouldn't have moved it, uh, chances are it would have rained. Um, but a special thanks to our partners from Spirit Aerosystems and the Air Capital Flight Line for allowing us to flex to the alternate location today, so I appreciate the teamwork. Major General Barrett, Mrs. Barrett, thanks for taking the time out of your busy three-day visit. Uh, to spend this ceremony with us. Colonel Olson, Colonel Hesseltine, Colonel Vernerdi, group commanders, honorary commanders, community leaders, distinguished guests, and members of Team McConnell. It's my pleasure and distinct honor to celebrate this milestone in McConnell's storied history with you and the air capital community that surrounds us. An event such as this doesn't happen on its own, of course, so thank you to Tech Sergeant Putnam, wherever he's at, Senior Master Sergeant Martin, the protocol team, and the many, many airmen of Team McConnell for making today's ceremony a success. We've talked about it since uh, opening remarks this morning during General Barrett's visit, but uh, you'll notice a theme during the remarks of today, and that's teamwork, cooperation, partnership. It takes an, it takes an army, literally, to complete a po project such as this, and there are many to thank. Our prime contractors, uh, Chicago-based Walsh Company, the U.S. Army Corps Engineers, and their lead, Mr. John Schwartzbeck. Our outstanding subcontractors, Mr. Bob Day and a and Electric. Our very own radar, airfield, and weather systems airmen, teammates in the 22nd Civil Engineering Squadron and the 22nd Communications Squadron, and finally, a special thanks to, Major da uh, to Mr. David Tinder, 22nd Operations Support Squadron Air Traffic Controller. Dave, I know this is a special day for you, and thank you for seeing the team McConnell to the end. This structure behind us will forever have your stamp on it, and the airmen for decades to come are in your debt, so thank you. McConnell Air Force Base sits at the center of the air capital of the world, and our state-of-the-art tower is just a beacon that shines at the heart of it all. In the early 2000s, a structural study was done on McConnell's existing tower that was built in the 1960s, remarkably the same age as most of the KC-135s that sit across the ramp. The study recommended replacement of the tower because it didn't meet current structural requirements for the air traffic control towers, and thus began a long 20-year journey. While not specifically tied to the delivery of the KC-46, this $11.2 million project is but a capstone on the $27 million project to improve overall airfield operations here at McConnell. So as we usher in a new era of air refueling capabilities, we also bring with it this tower that will serve the needs of McConnell aviators well into the future. Made of extremely rigid steel capable of standing the harsh winds and climate of, uh, of Kansas, the new tower stands 55 feet taller and two stories taller than its predecessor with a cab that weighs over 48,000 pounds. With numerous training and conference room space at more than 6,600 square feet, it's almost three times the size of the old tower. These upgrades transform our airmen's workspace into a progressive classroom and a dynamic aviation control center. Our trainers now have space to train our new airmen as well as our incoming experienced controllers without running into the person next to them, and our supervisors have a better view of what's happening. Overall, it provides a distinct, higher level of service than we've had in the last 60 years and allows our airmen to grow as McConnell trains the next generation of mobility pilots. 
from an operator standpoint, it brings with it a tactical edge to go along with the delivery of the Air Force's newest weapon system. It boasts state-of-the-art digital radar systems and the latest in digital radios and fiber optics. These capabilities bring the facility online with the best technology available throughout the FAA and further showcases and enhances our ability to control and train airmen in a quality setting. Without a doubt, the new capabilities will allow ATC airmen to continue their mission to provide technically adept services in support of Team McConnell's mission and local civil aviation requirements. So here's where I get to brag on our airmen a little bit, uh, the, the airmen that sit behind you. After receiving the keys two weeks ago, our radar, airfield, and weather system uh, section, a grand total of four airmen, in partnership with engineering and installation team members from Keesler Air Force Base, work day and night to cut over the existing communications equipment over from the old to the new. The best part is, we didn't miss a beat. Operating on tactical handheld radios and without radar capability, these amazing airmen made it happen. Why did we do that? Because this command, this Air Force, and this nation depend on our ability to refuel the fight worldwide at a moment's notice. We couldn't miss an opportunity, uh, we couldn't miss and afford to miss an opportunity to, uh, to launch a single training sortie, a single short notice tasking, or a single FAM sortie for the KC-46. So as you look behind me at one of the tallest structures in Wichita, I ask that you take a moment and realize what this stands for, and it's more than just an airfield tower. It's a monument to the dedication, commitment, cooperation, and teamwork between Team McConnell's three wings, the community of Wichita and its surrounding areas, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, Walsh Contracting, and many hardworking airmen. It's a monument that we can all be proud of, especially the airmen of the 22nd Operation Support Squadron who care for the skies around McConnell and ensure our aviators come home safely. So as we look forward to the future, I cannot help to think of what will be in the next 60 years. But I know this, it all starts and ends with the takeoff and landing clearance. And our new tower and the work that it took to make it happen allows McConnell to do what we do best, which is fuel the fight through combat-ready airmen and manage the skies over the air capital of the world. At this time, I'd like to introduce the commander, 22nd Civil Engineering Squadron, Lieutenant Colonel Dan Craig. Thank you again for attending today's ceremony, and thank you for the contributions that each of you have made. Thank you. Absolutely. All right, Team McConnell, what a wonderful Kansas day, and what a beautiful tower. It's an honor for Team McConnell to celebrate this ribbon cutting with our distinguished guests, command leaders, Kansas officials, and partners. Projects like this simply don't happen overnight, and they don't happen by themselves. Rather, it has been many years from the support by many to make this possible. From Air Mobility Command and 18th Air Force, who championed this initiative, to the Air Force planners working with the engineering team from McConnell, the United States Army Corps of Engineers, Kansas City District, the Air Force Management Team, the architect, Burns and McDonald, and Walsh Construction Team, and its many skilled craftsmen who work tirelessly building through the summer, the winter, rain, wind, or shine to create this important, incredible facility. See, for any Air Force base, the air tower is a defining feature as it peers into the sky. Its purpose is to ensure that the air in the pattern is safe. It bears the unique bird's eye view that also witnesses the immense capability of our nation's Air Force. Like the historical curator, the tower sees the awesome might through the generations. Exceptionally prominent in this community and at this base, Wichita has a rich aviation history deeply rooted and extending over a century. The very area that we stand now in the side of the tower is where the original pioneers of aviation stood and built the coveted grounds of the air capital of the world. The early years, operations flew without a control tower. Eventually, the Wichita Airport was built in 1935, and at that time, flights were monitored by a window from the East Wing, now known as the Kansas Air Museum. Then, as operations grew, originally to support grass runways, the first tower was built in 1941 at 54 feet. It was an innovation of its time as the first tower in the nation with angled windows built from oak case framing to allow the controllers to see the operations across the busy airfield. From these towers, we saw aircraft like the B-29 Superfortress and the B-47 Stratojet launched. As aviation grew, along with the importance of air power, the second tower, advent of the Cold War, was built in the Eisenhower era. Originally expected to only last 35 years, 
it proved to be a Stallworth facility. Controlling the air for many aircraft to include the F-105 Thunder Chief, the B-1B Lancer, and the mighty KC-135. Supporting and defending our nation through the decades, over 50 years later, we are here today to bring our newest tower online, a truly state-of-the-art facility. Beneath the tower, over four feet thick of reinforced concrete and steel is the foundation, where structural beams span 120 feet to the top of the tower, like the aircraft that were built and flew the Kansas skies here over a century ago in the aviation industry that still continues today, this tower was built with pride by the citizens of Wichita, Derby, and the surrounding communities, guaranteeing its strength, which is impressive. Capable of operating in excess of 120 mile per hour winds, vital to ensuring the safe operations of the 24,000 annual sorties, launches, and landings to include the Air Force's newest tanker, the KC-46 Pegasus. Today, we have 41 air controllers. In 1941, there were only a few. If only the original controllers like John Clark, Tom Grabber, Pat Pollock, or Mary Chance Van Syke, a Wichita native and the country's first female air traffic controller, could see this today, they would say that the future remains bright. Because much like the air refueling tanker, that is indispensable to sustain the joint warfighter. So vital too is a tower which directs these aircraft for safe and efficient operations. The first tower saw the dawn of aviation. The second tower witnessed the might and national importance of air power. What will the third tower see? Undoubtedly, it will see the next advancement, much like the original pioneers. It's inevitable. As Team McConnell remains committed with innovation, pride and professionalism, our airmen will continue the heritage for future generations. We are AR. Thank you, Lieutenant Colonel McVeigh and Lieutenant Colonel Craig. We now invite McConnell Tower Representative, Mr. David Tinder, United States Army Corps of Engineers Representative, Mr. John Schwartzbeck, Tower Construction Project Manager representing Walsh Construction, Mr. Glenn Quapis, and the Commander, 18th Air Force Major General Sam Barrett, to join Lieutenant Colonel McVeigh and Lieutenant Colonel Craig. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now cut the ribbon and officially open the McConnell Air Force Base Air Traffic Control Tower. Thank you, gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, Lieutenant Colonel McVeigh would like to present a small token of appreciation to Mr. Quapis, Mr. Schwartzbeck, and Mr. Tinder. Lieutenant Colonel McVeigh. Ladies and gentlemen, as we conclude today's ceremony, 
Please stand and join us in the singing of the Air Force song and remain standing for the departure of the official party and our pre-identified guests that will be proceeding to the air traffic control tour, tower for a tour. This concludes today's ceremony. We thank you for attending and hope you have a great Air Force Day.